Assalamu alaikum viewers please like share and subscribe this channel links of pdf files used in this video are given in description so today's lecture is about complexometric edta titration and in this titration we will estimate nickel via an indirect method so this is a complexometric indirect edta titration so the question is to determine the amount per liter of nickel chloride dot 6H2O in a given sample solution volumetrically, you are provided with 0.025 molar EDTA and 0.025 molar zinc sulfate dot 7H2O as standard solutions. So in this particular titration, our analyte is nickel chloride dot 6H2O, whereas our standard solutions are 0.025 molar EDTA and 0.025 molar zinc sulfate dot 7H2O. Usually, in EDTA titrations, we only take EDTA as standard solution. But in this particular titration, we are actually using two standard solutions. The reason is that because of the peculiar nature of nickel chloride, because it is not measured or estimated directly, but it is measured by an indirect way. Now, what is the that way? We will learn in the lecture. So this is another type of complexometric titration. So we know that in complexometry, a coordination complex is formed. So nickel act as a central metal atom or ion, whereas EDTA as usual act as a hexadentate chelated ligand. Now why this titration is to, um, we are doing by an indirect way? It is because nickel does not give any sharp point with the indicator. So this titration is carried out by indirect way. Uh, usually uh, the analyte um, give a sharp end point or color change with the indicator but nickel don't give that sharp change in color with EBT so we are using an indirect approach so as usual EDTA is a hexadentate little ligand and is used as titrant but this titrant is used in excess form so what does it mean we will see next in the lecture Similarly, another standard solution which is zinc sulfate dot 7H2O is used and this zinc is used in order to determine the excess form of EDTA. So, um, this confusion will be um, solved when we will um, see the process of this reaction. Similarly, the complexation, complexation takes place at basic pH conditions. EBT as usual is used as an indicator and this is a weak ligand so uh, only the edta will make a stable complex with metal so in the presence of edta the complex between ebt and metal will be break and the complex between edta and metal will be formed so the end point of this titration is white wine red color usually the end point of this titration is sky blue color which is the actual color of aerochrome black tea or solochrome black tea indicator but in this particular titration, the end point is also reversed, which is wine red color. So why this wine red color appears? Why we are EDTA adding EDTA in excess form? And why we are doing or adding zinc sulfate to find the excess amount of EDTA? All these questions will be given in the lecture. So this is the experimental setup of this titration. So as uh, in direct way we add edta in the burette but in this case we will take standard solution of zinc sulfate dot 7h2o in the burette now what we'll do in the flask first of all we will take 10 ml of nickel sample solution whose estimation is to be carried out then we will add a buffer solution in order to make ph basic and then we will add aerochrome black tea or solochrome black tea in indicator as indicator so as the indicator is added in this solution ebt forms a complex with metal and uh, this complex turns into this color uh, so the initial titration of uh, starts with the color which is wine red which is formed because of the uh, formation of a complex between ebt and metal but one thing extra we are doing here and that is that we are adding in excess EDTA. So approximately one test tube or about 20 ml of EDTA is also added in this solution. 
now what happens that as edta is a is making a more stable complex as compared to ebt so all of the metal will break its complex from the aerochrome black t and again a complex is formed now between nickel and edta so as all the nickel now has been shifted towards edta and uh, now ebt set free so this wine red color then shifts into the sky blue color which is actually the color of aerochrome black tea so it means even we have not started to add it titrant from the burette so first the color of this solution was uh, wine red and then after addition of excess amount of edta the color has turned into sky blue as shown in figure so this was the stage one and this is the stage two so why this color change has taken place so this is the structure of aerochrome black tea or solochrome black tea when it don't make any complex with metal but as it make a complex or chelated complex with metal uh, like uh, here we have to place nickel and similarly we have to place nickel here so as uh, it form a complex with metal then colors are changed from sky blue to wine rat now let's see what happens what stage comes when we add zinc sulfate dot 7 h2o from the burette now what is happening here that as nickel don't give sharp end point with the aerochrome black tea so what we are doing here that we have taken this in the flask first we have added ebt then it make a complex then we added excess amount of edta now we don't know how much amount of this excess edta has made a complex with nickel definitely it has made some complex with nickel but we don't know how much edta has reacted with nickel and how much this edta has become set free so the first now choice is that we have to find the amount of edta which is present here and which is set free here so for that we will add from the biorotizing sulfate dot 7 h2o so what it will do it will react with this excess amount of edta here and when all the edta will make complex with zinc then next drop of zinc will come down and will react with this aerochrome black tea and turn again this uh, sky blue color which is the color of indicator to again a wine red color so in this way now again after the addition of zinc sulfate and at the end point again a color shifts from blue to wine red so it means the start of the titration was wine red and now the end point of this titration is wine red so this was actually the stage two and now we have the stage three which is the wine red color again and which is the end point of this titration so this is the structure of edta or ethylene diamine tata acetic acid it is actually a hexadentate ligand and at one time it makes six coordinate covalent bonds with metal so here it is the geometry uh, but in this particular example we are not taking a fully full form of uh, acetic acid but we are taking its salt to make it to make it soluble in water so now let's see here that it is not only forming six coordinate covalent bonds with nickel and giving an octahedral geometry but it is also making a chelated complex that is why in place of ebta if edta or ethylene diamine tetraestic acid is present then the metal will always make a stable complex with edta so this complex is also uh, a chelated complex like here we are seeing one ring then there is a second ring then there is third ring this is a fourth ring then there is this five fifth five ring so it means there are a lot of rings and whenever these rings are present then it it means stability to the complex so next is observations and calculations we will take about three concordant readings and then we will take mean of these readings so first reading is 
for zinc sulfate dot 7h2 and this concordant mean volume used is about 15 ml now what we will do in the first calculation first we will determine the excess amount of edta that has remained unreacted and it was determined by titrating it with zinc sulfate dot 7h2o so on one side we will write zinc sulfate dot 7h2o whereas on the other side we will write edta so m1 v1 over n1 is equal to m2 v2 over n2 m1 is the molarity of the zinc sulfate dot 7h2o which is given in the question v1 is the volume volume which has come 15 n1 and n2 both are one as one molecule of zinc is reacting with one molecule of edta m2 is the molarity of 0.025 molar edta which is also given in the question and in this equation we want to determine v2 so by rearranging this equation v2 we find 15 ml it means that the unreacted form of edta was 15 ml which has reacted with zinc sulfate dot 7h2o so the excess amount of edta unreacted is 15 ml then it means what amount of edta with it has reacted with nickel so as we have added first in excess 20 ml so 15 ml have been reacted with uh, zinc sulfate so it means only 5 ml of edta has reacted with nickel so now we will do a second calculation and in this calculation on one side we will write edta on other side we will write nickel so this is the m1 v1 over n1 is equal to m2 v2 over n2 which is a typical molarity formula for titration so m1 is the molarity of edta which is given in question this v1 is the volume of edta which has actually reacted with nickel m2 we want to find 10 ml is the v2 which is the volume of sample solution of nickel taken then n1 is equal to n2 both are 1 is to 1 so by rearranging this equation we find m2 and m2 comes which is 0.0125 so in order to determine amount per liter of nickel we will multiply the molarity with the atomic weight of nickel which is 58.69 so the amount per liter of nickel is 0.733 grams per liter whereas the amount per liter of nickel chloride dot 6h2o comes by multiplying molarity with the molecular weight of this nickel chloride dot 6h2o and the answer is 3.28 grams per liter so the final result of this titration is that the given solution sample solution contains 3.28 gram per liter of nickel chloride dot 6h2o so in order to avoid um, that sharp change uh, that is not coming by reacting nickel and ebt we have done an in direct way and first we have added excess amount of edta some amount of edta has reacted with nickel whereas unreacted amount has reacted with zinc so from total amount of edta added we will minus the amount of edta which has reacted with zinc then amount of edta that has reacted with nickel has come then by applying the calculations and formulas we have determined the amount per liter of nickel in a given sample solution so this was all about today's lecture i hope you have well understood this lecture but if still you feel some confusion or some doubts in your mind please let me know in the comment section i will respond to your queries as soon as possible okay thank you allah hafiz